There is a certain sort of horror associated with the phenomenon or the sensation of being lost, of not knowing where you are, but being certain that you don't belong there. Sometimes called maze of phobia, the fear of being lost is not only triggered by actually being lost, but also by other things, lost levels in video games, footage of secret passages, empty hallways, and backstage areas, and more. And we will include some of that dread in today's adventure. Welcome to PhD and D, everyone. I'm Dr. Bowers, and today we're going to discuss the Vague Agency, a domain of dread in Ravenloft that is a detective office. As usual, we will describe what the domain is, list some media that help us get an imaginative grip on the domain, and then sketch out an adventure. And this adventure is actually quite unique. It's something that you might call a meta-adventure, or an adventure that takes place as events unfold in an adventure hub. But first, what is the Vague Agency? Well, everything inside the office of the Vague Agency appears as a monotone gray. Anyone who passes the frosted glass door that leads into the single-room domain is expected by Flamira Flintlock Vague, the detective agency's owner. From this hub for occult detective adventures, Vague collects mysterious correspondence relating to mysteries all across the domains of dread. She enlists agents to investigate these cases and then report back to her. However, she never reveals her own past as a detective turned criminal, her involvement in every case her agency investigates, or that the Vague agency exists entirely within her mind. Okay, so the Vague Agency is one of many domains of dread, which is basically a room or a couple of rooms. It's a very tiny pocket domain in that sense. But unlike other domains of dread, the Vague Agency presents itself, or at least it's presented by Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft, as being an adventure hub, a place that PCs return to in between adventures. In fact, if you're ever going to run a domain-hopping Ravenloft campaign, the Vague Agency is an excellent domain to use as an adventure hub. In between Ravenloft adventures, in other words, the PCs will show up at the Vague Agency, correspond with Flamira Vague, and certain events will unfold which are themselves a kind of story or adventure. Speaking of which, let's talk about Flamira Vague and list some influences that help us get an imaginative grip on her character. Now, I imagine that Flamira Vague, like any Dark Lord, is tortured. And her torture consists not only in the fact that she cannot leave her office, but in the fact that she is an expert monster hunter, and she's constantly witnessing second-hand accounts of bungled adventures by adventurers. It's the frustration of an expert forced to watch the performance of an amateur, in other words. Anytime someone comes into Flamira Vague's office, she hears a tale of adventure which, in her mind, she would have done much better. To capture this idea, first consider Episode 9 of Season 2 of Star Trek The Next Generation called Manhunt, specifically the scene when Jean-Luc Picard relaxes in the office of Dixon Hill, or at least attempts to relax. In this scene, Captain Picard is dressed as a famous noir detective from fiction, Dixon Hill, and he was hoping to relax in the holodeck and have mysteries to solve. But every time someone comes into his office, it's a hostile encounter, one that terrifies him and forces him to freeze the program. I'm here to kill you. Computer, freeze program! There's a job I want you to do for me. Computer, freeze program. You're true ducking me, Hill! Computer, freeze program! Not only is the office an appropriate inspiration for the Vague Agency, but I also imagine Picard's frustration as being similar to Flamira Vague's frustration. Picard wants an easygoing mystery, and instead he gets violent attackers. Flamira wants to talk to another expert adventurer, but instead she's surrounded by idiots. Or at least from her point of view. I'd also look at the character of Verusa Bloodstone from the Marvel streaming Halloween special Werewolf by Night. Indeed, the Bloodstone Society seems to be exactly the sort of thing that the Vague Agency wishes it could be. Flamira Vague has an obsession with hunting monsters and solving mysteries, and she can't do any of it, so she tries to do it vicariously through adventurers, always in a less than satisfactory way. In fact, for Flamira Vague's character, you might want to merge Verusa Bloodstone with someone like Scully from the X-Files? Moving on, let's talk about some musical influences. When it comes to atmosphere for the Vague Agency, I highly recommend the 2000 album Sunset Mission by Bohren and their Club of Gore. When your PCs are at the Vague Agency, just put this album on repeat. It's amazing. It's excellent. With dark, brooding jazz, it captures a film noir atmosphere without being too intrusive. It's great. In a pinch, you might also use Angelo Badalamenti's soundtrack from 1990 for the series Twin Peaks. And speaking of which, when it comes to the Vague Agency as a domain, the description in Van Richten's guide makes you think of the office of Sam Spade from 1941's The Maltese Falcon, but I also imagine the Red Room from Twin Peaks, specifically as it first appears in Episode 2 of Season 1. 
The Red Room is a liminal space, metaphysically isolated, where a detective lounges among mysterious things. The idea and the mood and the soundtrack are all good inspirations for the Vague Agency. I also recommend chapters 19, 19, and 19 in that order from Lewis Sacker's 1989 children's novel Wayside School is Falling Down. Although presented in a whimsical manner, what goes on in those three chapters is in fact something of a horror story. In the book, Wayside School has no 19th story, but there are also a number of facts about the 19th story, such as Miss Zarves teaches on the 19th story, which there isn't one of. Now in these three particular chapters, 19, 19, and 19, a student finds herself on the 19th floor in Miss Zarves' classroom. She's found herself into some lost space, some wrong space that shouldn't be, and it's neat to think of the Vague Agency as being a little like that. Also, when thinking about the Vague Agency, I like to consider 1995's Chrono Trigger, and specifically the space called The End of Time. The End of Time is this liminal, metaphysically isolated space where things end up if they travel too much around the timeline. A lonely, isolated space with only one inhabitant is very much like the Vague Agency. I also recommend Stephen King's 1990 short story, The Langoliers. The short story, not the TV series. The feeling of missing the present, of being in the past, lost where you shouldn't be. And in particular, of having things behave strangely, how clocks don't work, fuel won't ignite, there's a problem interacting with the environment, are all ideas to bring to the Vague Agency. And visually speaking, I also recommend the 2018 work by Jeff Lee Johnson, Grand International Hotel. Just look at this thing. Can you find the spider? It's horrifying. I love it. And similar critters should appear in the Vague Agency. Speaking of which, when it comes to the monsters in the Vague Agency, I would consider the shadow monsters from 2022's Thor Love and Thunder. I wouldn't take anything from that movie other than the shadow monsters when thinking of the Vague Agency, but those monsters are perfect for the Vague Agency. I also recommend the short film The Backrooms Found Footage by Kane Pixels released in January of 2022. This is a short horror film that's likely to trigger mazophobia or the feeling of being lost, for that's what the horror film is mainly about, being lost in an endless expanse of mysterious office spaces. We're going to take the eponymous environment and use it in the climax of the adventure for the Vague Agency. Finally, when it comes to Flamira Vague as an antagonist, I'm thinking mainly of two sources. First, Gehrman from the 2015 game Bloodborne. Gehrman is a kind of mentor and quest giver at the very beginning of the game, but, spoilers, at the very end of the game he becomes a final boss that you face. I also think of the character Walter Donovan from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Again, a kind of mentor-like figure who originally gives out a quest, but who turns out at the end to be a traitor and a monster. That's the role that Flamira Vague is going to play relative to the PCs. Now, on to the adventure, or meta-adventure, because here's how we're going to run a campaign that includes the Vague Agency. We're going to assume that the PCs are hopping from Ravenloft Domain to Ravenloft Domain, perhaps using my own videos as a guide, and they end up in the Vague Agency in between at least a couple of domain-bound adventures. When they arrive, they meet Flamira Vague, who actually knows quite a bit about Ravenloft and Domains of Dread and Dark Lords and associated matters. She answers some of the PCs' questions and also displays a collection of mist talismans, allowing the PCs to choose where they travel next. But as the PCs continue to hop from domain to domain, occasionally returning to the agency, Flamira gets more and more frustrated with the PCs. Eventually she lashes out at them, and then we have a battle which plays out between the PCs and this Dark Lord, perhaps ending the entire Ravenloft campaign. Now, this adventure does not have a level range because it's designed to work with a variety of different levels. On the topic of monsters and challenge ratings, therefore, we're going to be flexible. So let's get started. The first thing the PCs will likely notice in the Vague Agency is that there is no color. Everything is monochrome. In addition, compasses fail. Clocks stop. Any sort of instrument or magic which would orient the PCs in time or in space fails. Now the PCs find themselves in an empty office foyer, the likes of which would normally feature a secretary. There are only two doors, one behind them leading out into a swirling cloud of mist, and the other leading into a private office with frosted glass and the label Flamira Vague, Private Investigator, on it. Assuming the PCs go into the office, they see Flamira Vague sitting behind a desk. She regards them cynically, as though expecting them. Well, 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 look what the cat dragged in. The first thing Flamira Vague will do is perform a Sherlock Holmes-esque deduction about where the PCs just were. By looking at dust or debris or how their clothes were damaged, Flamira will guess, correctly, where the PCs were, what they were doing, 
and how they ended up at her agency. She explains that she knows these things because she knows a lot about the Domains of Dread, why there isn't a Dark Lord that she hasn't heard of. As if to illustrate her point, Flamira gestures towards a bookcase filled with all manner of objects. Each object is a mist talisman, as described in Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft. Each object, in other words, comes from a domain and is magically tied to that domain so that if PCs enter the mist while holding that object, they will go to that domain of dread. A piece of alien equipment will take PCs to Blutspur, while a leathery, desiccated human heart might take them to Valachan. Flamira describes the mist talismans and what they're for and where they go, and here this is an excellent opportunity for DMs to give a menu of adventures. If you have several adventures in different domains of dread prepped, you could let your players choose among them by having mist talismans connected to each of the domains on this shelf. Of course, if there's a domain that you don't want the PCs to visit, make sure that it doesn't have a mist talisman on the shelves here. Now, Flamira is happy to answer questions about Ravenloft. She's not right about everything, but she does have a good grasp on what a Domain of Dread is, what a Dark Lord is, and how those are related. Now, if asked, Flamira denies that she's a Dark Lord, and she also denies that the agency is a Domain of Dread. Instead, she says it's something else entirely, a lost place, a secret place. Though cagey about her past, she admits that she used to be an adventurer and monster hunter, much like the PCs. Now, Flamira will let the PCs stay as long as they like, and she'll talk with them as long as they like, but she warns them that sleep is impossible in the Vague Agency. If they try to sleep, they're going to get interrupted and attacked by what she calls the Creepy Crawlies. These are spiders, centipedes, and other vermin that seem to be made of shadow that crawl out of the shadows and attack the PCs if they try to rest. As far as statistics are concerned, they could be anything from a phase spider to a drider, Heck, it could even be that mythic spider from Mythic Odysseys of Theros. Adjust the difficulty of the creatures to fit your PC's level. If the PCs find themselves fighting the creepy crawlies, Flamira might join in, but she does so in a detached, uninterested way. Now, whenever the PCs decide to leave, and assuming they take a mist talisman with them, Flamira is going to give the PCs advice for wherever they go. This advice will not be incorrect, but it will always involve doing something that is incredibly difficult, if not impossible. The PCs, therefore, shall find themselves seldom if ever following Flamira's advice. And sure enough, when PCs return from different domains of dread, Flamira is going to ask what they did and whether they followed her advice. If the PCs admit that they did not follow her advice, she will show disappointment and dismissiveness. And there's going to be a lot of, well, I simply would not have gotten hit, responses. I simply would have won. If the PCs get a little annoyed with this, good. It's going to continue and escalate every time the PCs leave to go on adventure and come back. Now eventually, Flamira's condescension and dismissiveness and her constant comparisons between how the PCs did and her own hypothetical efforts, which would have been much better, should lead to a fight. Perhaps the PCs start it, or perhaps it's near the end of the campaign and Flamira starts it herself. But when the fight starts, for the very first time, Flamira Vague closes her domain's borders. Now when she closes her domain's borders, what happens is the outer door no longer leads to the mists. Instead, it leads into another office, and another office, and another set of offices, and another hallway lined with doors that lead to more offices that lead to more offices ad infinitum. And it is in this backrooms-like setting that a chase and a battle with Flamira Vague may take place. As for Flamira's statistics, I would give her the statistics for some Strixhaven faculty member for the first part of the adventure, but in the confrontation, I would give her the statistics of a fiend or aberration, maybe an amnesu or a star spawn seer. Make sure to give her plenty of minions, of course, and you can use those shadowy creatures. And one last thing that you might consider doing is revealing a true identity of Flamira Vague. I think it would be interesting if it turned out that Flamira Vague used to be not only a monster hunter, but a famous one, maybe Esmeralda from Curse of Strahd, or the one that goes by the name Weathermay Foxglove. That may be fun, especially if your PCs have heard tales of some famous monster hunter as they go about their Ravenloft adventures. So anyway, that's our adventure, or meta-adventure, in the Vague Agency. What do you think? Do you agree that this Domain of Dread was intended to serve as an adventure hub? And if so, do you agree that the adventure which takes place in it should be an unfolding of relations with Flamira Vague and the PCs? Also, how would you have characterized the Vague Agency? Let me know in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to do all the internet things. Click like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell icon if you want notifications about new content uploaded to this channel. And thanks!